welcome back to another week of SPP. We are so excited to have Jamie here um, from Clifton Larson Allen. And so we're going to start off this week um, by just introducing him, letting him talk a little bit about you know, his career path and a little bit about CLA. And then we're going to get into our big topic of firm culture and public accounting. So we're really excited. That sounds great. I, I, I'll start if you don't mind. Uh, so again, my name is Jamie Hinkemeyer. I work for CLA. It's a national accounting firm. We happen to be the eighth largest firm in the nation. Uh, we're sort of the, the biggest small firm you've ever met or heard of. We are only a year into recruiting at Auburn and we're only five years into the existence of CLA Atlanta. And that's where we work. We're up to 130 people in Atlanta. We started with 22 people in 2016. So there's been a fair amount of growth and acquisition activity over the last five years. I mentioned us being the biggest small firm. I, I think that it's, it relates to the, the focus that we have. So this is a firm that's been in existence for about 70 years. And we've always been focused on privately held business, meaning we're not here chasing Home Depot's audit or the tax provision for Coca-Cola. We wanna do our best to provide a very seamless and wide base of service for privately held business and the owners of that business. And so you, you'll see us doing a lot beyond just a typical CPA firm, right? So clearly we do assurance work, we do tax work, we do consulting. But beyond that, we're, we're doing so much more. And it's our goal to be there as a steward, um, as, a, as a resource to those, those business owners, because it's a very challenging environment, especially the last 18 months. And uh, we're doing what we can to try to help them and support them. So we have about 7,500 people nationally. Um, and all of that focus, again, is on the privately held space. Um, CLA Atlanta, uh, we've been blessed to have a good first five years um, you know, with, with the growth that I mentioned, we've had a ton of organic growth and a lot of people growth, which is, which is great to see. So we're, we're, we're excited where this is headed and um, appreciate you all taking the time to, to learn a little bit more, especially given the fact that, again, we're only about a year into recruiting at Auburn. We are so excited to have you um, recruiting here now. It's a great opportunity for our students as well. Right. I think I'm going to hand it over to Catherine for our first question about um, firm culture. Yeah, so really great to hear about, you know, how much y'all are growing in Atlanta. So how would you describe that culture of CLA, um, whether it's in your office or like kind of nationally and how it affects the quality of the employee's experience and the work product for your client? Yeah, culture. I mean, I think culture is important for any business, for any CPA firm, for any any prospective um, employer, for students. It, it really drives everything that that happens. And, you know, you think about all we're doing a CPA firm, all we're doing is selling hours, right? And, and the, the value of that hour is perceived not only internally, but externally, and then valued via an invoice. And, you know, I think that it plays into how successful we are. So you think about the value an hour, it comes down to the value of the person, right? And, and one of the great things about public accounting, and you'll probably hear some of my bias throughout the, throughout the video here today, but, but one of the great things is that we all start in the same spot, right? Typically, we have a very similar degree, and we've, we've come from a, a great institution, and, but, but we all start at that same spot where, where we have theoretical base, but the application is, is ground zero. And, and putting and investing in those people, it, it, it's quite amazing to see them grow over the first, even months of their of their path. But over the first couple of years, they get a ton of it. But but culture defines everything that goes about on the day to day basis. And you know, if you were to go back five years ago, CLA wasn't in Atlanta, and you would be asking yourself, well, how does a national firm now in Atlanta? And we were asking ourselves the same thing. But we're very sensitive to interacting with a firm to see if they would like to join us. And it always starts and ends with culture. So the reason that we weren't in Atlanta sooner is because we didn't find that, that right fit. So let's talk about the fact that we've gone from 22 to 130 people. Because you could look at it and say, well, Jamie, you, you guys acquired the cats in 2016 and the dogs in 2018. You put them in the same pen. And you know what, what was the impact of that? It, culture is something that we have to work at every single day. And we're never gonna get to the point where we have culture figured out and 
we can stop working at it. Uh, we were lucky enough or blessed enough last fall to be um, named. Uh, we took third place in best places to work out of about 6,500 companies our size. So the, the, the cats and the dogs seem to be getting along well, uh, but it is it is a constant battle and it really comes down to the people and the value of that hour, right? So we have to be we have to be interacting with the right type of student. We have to be recruiting the right type of student. We have to make sure that there's a fit. So our our onboarding and our interview process is, is fairly in depth. We have, we, our first priority is making sure people feel safe during this pandemic, but we have prioritized having people come into the office. We at least invite them. And it's funny because I think the, the students very much appreciate that, right? So, you know, getting through virtual interviews is fine, but but I think culture is best felt in person. And so getting those people in the office to, to work along along with other people, right? Assuming everyone's comfortable with that. We've always prioritized if you're not comfortable, you don't have to be in the office. But, but uh, allowing that and offering that has been a big part of how we've been able to maintain culture. But at the end of the day, it's all about getting the right connections, right? So if we're recruiting another firm, we're making sure that they fit and profile well. If we're recruiting a student, again, same thing. It's all about, you know, because we spend a lot of time together, right? And 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 that's that's just critical to enjoying this. Awesome. Yeah, that's some great insight. Um, and I'm sure students do appreciate getting to come into the office. That's kind of a rare thing in recruiting right now. So I'm sure that's a great experience for them because um, they probably haven't had a lot of experience in person with any professionals. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so you touched on this a little bit, maybe you can go a little more in depth of how your firm is able to kind of maintain that core culture as you're growing and merging so quickly. You kind of touched on that that is a priority right now. Um, so how are you able to kind of keep that culture as that is happening so rapidly? Well, I, I think it I think it starts and ends with trust, right? So, you know, maybe maybe their value, there'd be value in me explaining how we handled the pandemic. Right. Um, so, you know, immediately the, the firm, which has over a billion dollars of revenue, has to go through some scenario analysis where they do the, the what happens if we lose five, 10, 15 percent of our revenue during the pandemic? And what is the impact of that? You know, we, we talk about the CLA family and, and how that defines who we are. <clears throat> so it was actually very straightforward for us to say we're not going to do layoffs. We're not going to cut people. Right. You know, if there's not enough food to share, that doesn't mean you you kick someone out, right? It just means that we may all eat less. And we we implemented a across the board 10% reduction in pay effective May 1st. And we communicated to the best of our ability why we were doing that, right? And, and we showed them numbers and we showed them the scenario analysis. And we said, this is why we think this is the most prudent thing to do. Short of laying people off, we, we had to manage our spend. And the feedback we got was understand, you know, I don't think anyone loved, loved the idea of taking a pay cut, but we understand and we really appreciate the clarity. And I think that that was a great investment in our culture. Now, as the year played out, our scenario analysis was conservative and people ended up having a reduction in pay that was supposed to last for eight months, ended up getting shortened to six months and then three months. And then ultimately in October, everyone was paid back for what they lost during the summer. But that entire time we communicated, right? So I think that we are very, I think we have a, we do a good job of, of understanding our vision and executing it, but most importantly, communicating that right to our people. So our people know what we're doing, why we're doing it. And I, I think that plays out into culture. Uh, you know, I mentioned the, the recruiting aspect. Um, I think that's important. And then it really comes down to our focus, right? We're here to create opportunities for our people, for our communities, and for our clients, right? And if we just focus on that, we think everyone will have the success that they desire. You know, one example on, on communities. So we have an internal foundation, and, and, and it's designed around doing great things in our community. So we go to the 7,500 people and say, hey, if you're interested, please make a contribution to our foundation. Last year, we raised about a million dollars for the 7,500 people. And then we take that money and then normal CLA people get in a room and say, what do we do with this, right? And, and we make investments. 
in our communities as a result, right? So the, the money comes in from the employees and then it goes out to most likely nonprofit endeavors that, that resonate within our community. So it, it, it's, it helps build family, right? That this is more than just getting a tax return done or, or getting a financial statement done. And so you're, you're really trying to move us forward in a way that people understand and, and people can get behind, right? I mean, we work hard, so why are we working hard, right? What, what is the value that we provide and, and what is it that uh, results from our efforts? Yeah, definitely. I think that communication and like making sure that your employees feel heard as well as like the communication is going both ways. I think that's a really, really good thing you'll have going. So um, I know we've talked about recruiting some, but what is your best advice for students who are going through the recruiting right now to help them find a firm with a culture that best fits their needs? Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to give a couple comments. So, so the first thing I would say is get engaged as quickly as possible, right? So if you're a sophomore or later, look to get engaged and, and just meet people, right? Uh, you'd be amazed at how well that represents you if you are engaged, right? I, I would much rather engage or uh, have a conversation with someone that is, it's too early for them to do an internship for us, but but I'm willing to make commitments 12, 18, 24 months out, right? And, and you will find, and I don't, I'm starting to show my age and I don't mean to get preachy, but you will find that if you create a vision for yourself and you tell people about that and they, they will be empowered and, and, and encouraged by what you're thinking and they will find ways to help you, right? So the quicker you can get engaged with employers, I think the better, right? Show that engagement, show that you're willing to commit to something. The second thing I would add is once you're interacting, do whatever you can to meet as many people from the employer as possible, right? So think about if you were the employer recruiting, you're probably gonna send your most bubbly person to a campus, right? Right, because you're you're not going to send Jimmy or Mary that that doesn't know how to communicate, right? So so know that when you're interacting with a recruiter, that's probably one of their most bubbly people, right? So they're going to show very very well, right? So so how do you get into the organization and meet other people, meet the normal people, right? The people that aren't designed around recruiting, and and try to try to you know and, and ask the worst that you'll hear is no, but hey, can I meet someone that is in their first year? Right. And then ask that person, you know, what what they told you, is that how it played out during your first year? And what are they doing to invest in you? Are you enjoying the work? And 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 just do whatever you can to meet as many people from an organization. Um, and I think that that will that will play out. So those would be my my two pieces of advice for the students. Yeah, that is great advice. And honestly, that turned out to be some of the most fun, fun part of the recruiting process is getting to meet people and talking about their experience and kind of see how that lines up with what you think you may want to do with your career. So that's really cool. Awesome. Well, I think that is all of the questions that we have. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be with us. Um, I know our students are really looking forward to seeing this and um, really looking forward to your event next week. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Hallie. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Awesome. Thank you, War Eagle. All right, War Eagle. <laughs>